So I asked you for some risks that a client faces because of a computer information system and asked you to think about your cell phone and the risks that you face because you have a cell phone. Guys, the obvious risks that I would have expected you to have come up with are things like you could lose what's on your cell phone. So lose the data on your cell phone, your photos, your messages. If you get a virus from looking at an online site you shouldn't have been looking at, or if it just crashes, you know how these cell phones just one day just don't switch on. You could lose all your data, or you try to transfer data to another phone and all of a sudden it's gone and it's nowhere to be found. Another thing I expect you to be able to identify as a risk having your cell phone was it could get stolen. People want cell phones. Data could be stolen if it gets hacked. So same thing we spoke about. Losing data through a virus or now somebody actually hacks your phone and can gain the information or gather information from your phone. So those were things that I thought you could come up with by just looking at your phone and thinking about the risks you face for having a phone. And guys, those are risks that the client faces in having a computer information system. There could be a virus that somehow gets onto their system and they lose the data. It could crash. They could physically damage their hardware, which could affect the software. It could get stolen. People come in and steal their computers. Or data could be stolen if their systems get hacked. There could be unauthorized access by hackers or by people who have access, but their access should be limited to a certain space, and they're able to gain further access. And they shouldn't. And because of that, they can make changes to data or take data. It could be not user-friendly. You've got people who need to input data into the system and they don't know how it works. So when they input, it gets input incorrectly. That first risk we noted with having a computer information system. And then the second risk, so that was the first risk we noted. The second risk was that it could be processed incorrectly. The information goes in and goes to the wrong place. And that's an error in the design, in the programming of the software. So those are general risks that a client faces when they decide let's choose to use a computer information system instead of going manual here's what we have to consider as a risk in choosing this. Guys, what are the risks if they choose a manual system? There's a risk that the people don't know what to do so there's could be errors any way through the journaling, the GL, the TB, the financial. There's a risk they could have a fire and they lose all their physical hard copy documents and records. There's a risk that people gain access to their premises and steal their journals, their GLs, their TBs and financials. So what am I trying to show you? That these general risks don't see them only as computers and freak out because computers have all these extra risks. Computers have got some specific risks. But can you see, when I now go and say, well, what are the risks in a manual? In a manual environment, we've just identified the risk of losing data through it being physically damaged in a fire or it's stolen or unauthorized 
access somebody who shouldn't have access to invoices now has access to invoices and goes and creates fictitious invoices so when they go to the person to create the sales journal they go ahead and do create the sales journal because there's an invoice but there shouldn't be and if the documents and journals and GLs are not user friendly they're still going to be misstatements so you can see all of these risks barring error in design or software or viruses or crashes or hacking so guys you can see all these general risks barring the few that we've crossed off are relevant in a manual environment we've never just considered them because we just used to a manual environment but when I ask you to actually think about it, you can see these risks exist. So don't see computers as this big threat, all these additional risks. There are some risks that are exactly the same in a manual environment. And they have to have controls there. So they have to go and make sure they've got physical access controls so that they don't go and have people coming in and stealing their records and documents and so there isn't unauthorized access they have to make sure the design of their documents and accounting records are user friendly and they have to have controls to stop things from being physical dam physically damaged like fire extinguishers and protection against floods because they can lose their physical records the same way as you can use your computerized records if there is a fire or a flood. However, you don't have the risk that the process is designed or programmed incorrectly because that is a computer information system risk only. But you have a different risk and that's that the people don't know what to do. So there's still a risk there. And all I'm trying to show you guys is that computers is not that daunting if you actually do a comparison between manual and computers. Instead of just ignoring the manual and looking at just all these additional things for computers. Okay, so bearing in mind these risks, what controls could they have in place then to address these risks? Well, for error in design, they can go and make sure it's been programmed correctly so that it does go and process the journals in the right journal, the GL, the TB, and the financials correctly. And that's going to be all about what software they are using. Did they purchase it? Did they develop it? And is it in line with the financial reporting frameworks? How can they make sure they don't lose data because of viruses while well, they can have antivirus? And lose data because it crashes while well, they could have backups to prevent loss of data through crashes. So even though it's crashed and they can't access it now, they backed up. And so they've got the backup, which is everything that they had up until that point of backup. To make sure that it doesn't get physically damaged, they have to have rules around this. So you must have a fire extinguisher in case of fires. You must have an air con to keep it cool so it doesn't overheat. Don't eat around it. To prevent it from being physically stolen, access controls. To prevent data from being stolen and hacked, once again, access controls. But now, those first access controls were physical. Security, locking. These second access controls are now logical. Controls like passwords and usernames and restrictions so that you can't get in there. Firewalls, we'll hear all about them later. 
And the same with your unauthorized access. So that's the same as losing it because it's being hacked. That's somebody outside of the business, but unauthorized access is somebody inside the business. And making sure that it is user-friendly. And there are manuals. So that if you don't know what to do, you can go and research what to do and then ensure that you are inputting correctly so that it's processed correctly because it was programmed correctly. So those are some general controls, guys. Now I'm going to go one step further and actually put these controls into the specific categories of general controls so that you can see how you need to study them.